Sam, good place to start. Um, can you give us an update on the squad in particular? Seamus Coleman, how close is he? To Seamus is a considerable way away to, at the moment, obviously, because of his long-standing injury. He's been introduced back to training with the first-team squad uh, on a regular basis, and we monitor that training on a on a daily basis to see how n not just the injury part of his uh, his uh, body but also his body in in total on on the fact that he has to get match fitness as quick as he can which will uh, give him a better chance in full-time training with the players again set up a few probably behind closed doors games to let him play in and then introduce him back to the squad on monitoring him on a day-to-day -day basis really on how he feels I think if I asked him now, would you join the squad to play against Tottenham? He'd say, yes, I would. I'm fit enough. Um, but, you know, obviously we have a lot more indicators to to monitor to make sure that when he comes back, he's, his body is ready to cope with the physical challenge that um, he's been missing for so long. And any other updates? Michael Keane, is he back? Any players? Passed? Michael's not back. Michael's the stay day. A nasty gash on the top of his foot uh, which reopened an old one that had occurred before unfortunately for him and, uh, and us in exactly the same place as the old one was so it's it's taken a little bit longer a little bit more cautious in the healing process um, so he's not available for this weekend You've had a week now with Cenk Tosson how's he settled in? Uh, okay I think I think that uh, He's uh, obviously very eager to make an impression. I think that uh, he's in the squad for for Tottenham. Um, we have to try and hope he can go and hit the ground running. I don't think we need to feed him too much information and just go and, for now, play his natural game. And, and hopefully that's good enough to make an in, impression and make us better as a goal-scoring threat. And that will depend on how good our players are at delivering the service that he needs to be a goal threat or a goal scorer. Is it as much then about the service to try and score more goals? No doubt about that. I think that um, uh, the service provided in the final third is one of our weaknesses, um, is, which is why we're not scoring enough goals or we don't have actually enough natural goal scorers in the squad at the moment. So. We have to try and improve on that without losing our defensive qualities. Are you looking to try and bring in any more attacking players in January? Well, I think you're all aware of our interest in, in Theo, but if that's possible to get over the line, I'd be delighted. But obviously there's negotiations that are, that are happening at the moment. And if that can be um, all sorted out, which is one of the most difficult things to do today, um, then that would be a great addition, in my opinion, to come and, and join us uh, from an attacking point of view. T two, re two, two or three reasons, really. Um, goal scoring threat, uh, pace, um, experience, and, and, and he's good on assists from wide areas in terms of his crossing ability. So I think that uh, if that's at all possible, that would, that would be very nice. But... Uh, uh, it's not imminent at the moment, but I think some negotiations are going on. Is that for a permanent deal or a loan deal, do you understand? Uh, it's permanent. I don't think there's any chance of a, a, of a loan. Um, so I think it's a permanent deal that we're, we're uh, hoping to negotiate. And how optimistic are you that that can come off? Uh, I don't get optimistic. Otherwise I get disappointed. So we wait and see. Uh, I'll be very excited and enthused once it, so, somebody, if it's not Theo, somebody else has actually signed on the dotted line in this window or in any window. Now you don't get too optimistic because so many things can happen in just a short space of time that you, you, you'll never you'll never think a player's coming to until somebody tells you he's actually signed on the dotted line. And is he the only target at the moment? At the moment, yeah, because it's called one at a time. But you'd like more? Uh, well, I think their players would have to go out. I think we'd have to move players out. I think there's a a, a, a big squad, and I think that mo moving players out is 
is essential to bringing more players in, and that's that's me talking, not the not the club. I think that's essential that we tr trim the trim the squad down if we're to bring more players in to uh, adjust the balance of the squad and adjust the numbers. So we would be open, I think, to some negotiations negotiations for some of our players if that became a possibility where the club was satisfied with what had been offered by other clubs and we've had a number of inquiries by for some players but uh, none of those inquiries have hit any anything where our valuation might be and just finally on transfers and on those inquiries have any players come to you wanting to perhaps go and have an opportunity elsewhere uh well, even if there is, I wouldn't tell you. So I think that uh, th I think there are a no number of players that were not satisfied about the position that they're in at the moment. I think that's only natural to say that when when they're not getting a regular regular game, or in fact, not sometimes even getting on the substitutes bench now, which shows you the the, the size of the squad at the minute. So, uh, like I said, we will take a natural process that while this window's open, that if there's if there's offers for players to move out, and the, you have to get the player to want to agree as well. Obviously, it's not, not not a task where we just say, right, you know, you can go. The player has an, an option to say yes or no, like you mean. So, but we will be open to uh, to some negotiations on on moving players to to other clubs. We understand the FA is aware of some historical and allegedly homophobic tweets from Mason Holgate. Is that something you're aware of, and is it something the club? spoken to him about well I think that uh, in terms of awareness yes in terms of this that when it happened years ago uh, so he is fully aware and didn't need to be reminded of what the situation was because he's already they already know the players um, because historically we go through meeting after meeting from all areas through the FA um, th through the PFA that all are shown what to do and what not to do so this is an historical tweet from many many years ago so he doesn't need any reminding because he's, he's already and the players all the players have already been made aware for more I would have thought for more than this year I think it's been going on for years that we've pointed out to players about what they do and what they don't do and they're fully aware of that so um uh, it, it's um, obviously um, not in my hands. Wh whatever the situation is, and however it moves on, we will find out if and when the the course of action or what course of action might happen. We'll find out. And just uh, finishing up on the game itself, Tottenham and, and Wembley as well. I mean, <laughs> wow, <laughs> we've got a question about the game, <laughs> ain't that? We, wow, we like to throw one, here we go. Yes, one or go two. On. Um, you know, the the. the the prospect of playing at Wembley for both the, yourself and the players is it is it special or is it how do you try and treat it like a league game or do you try and treat it like something different? Well, I think that, that because you're playing at the national stadium, I think it's special. I think that um, uh, any opportunity to to play there is one that you should uh, should really look forward to. There's lots of lots of our players who've played there quite a few times, I think, and and um, I think that. In, in its its status and in its iconic status, I think you should look forward to going to playing there. I think that uh, for 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 me, Tottenham have overcome their problems they had with that stadium in the early stages of of when they played there in the Champions League, particularly, and and then in the league early on in the season, they've completely overcome those those negative vibes that everybody seemed to have about them, and are, are a big force there now. So. It uh, it'll be it'll be tough tough game to play because of the quality of their side and Wembley. You always hope bring the best out of our players by by playing on such an iconic stadium or in an, such an iconic stadium. Sam, just on on Tosin, um, how easy is it, is it to bed in players in January when obviously they've had no, they've had no pre-season with you? It's not easy at all. I mean, it might not work. You know, it might it might not happen. I mean, there's the the, the factor is 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 it's a massive um, massive uh, problem in terms of your hoping, really, rather than being guaranteed that that you can hit the ground running. We can only hope that you can hit the ground running. All his key performance indicators suggest he can, but 
that that said, when you look at the number of players that have been brought into this country from abroad, even in the summer and not worked, uh, particularly up front, it's it's a it's a risk. But you know, like I said, good deal for the club quality player in all key performance indicators desperate to come here desperate to play in the Premier League left a Champions League qualified team to come and play in the Premier League I think that says it all for the commitment of the player and uh, hopefully that cr commitment will um, get onto the field as quickly as possible and show us what he's shown everywhere else he's been particularly in Besiktas and in the Champions League this year Along those sort of lines, then with with World Cup, what does that say about the sort of the attraction of the club that you're you're trying for players like that and hopeful of, of bringing players like that in? Well, still, still was less, not as risky, mm -hmm. because he's proven he's got a hundred goals for Arsenal um, from wide positions, uh, as well as many assists. Uh, his his pace is his one of his key strengths which we lack in this squad um, his assists are pretty good as well as his goals and we're short of goals so to add power in our goal scoring ability would be would be very important for me if we can negotiate that transfer I mean, and he's only 28 yeah. in terms of bringing him to Everton it's not a, st a statement such but you know Everton maybe wouldn't sign Arsenal players that often it's bringing them out of London bringing them up here uh, well, I wouldn't have thought a player, a player today, would have any qualms about where he moves now. If it's improving his career, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought they'd have a, a mentality where that's not the place to go, wherever the right place is to get regular first team football. I think that, that that's, you know, our boots will travel now, innit? You know, foreign players will travel all over the world, though. So, our players or one of our players. One of our British or English players moving up the road shouldn't be a problem.